my name is Daniela Maciel. I am 15 years old. I go to Summit Collegiate High School, and the name of my documentary is Poder of a Classroom. I was inspired to make this documentary about Latinas in education because here in the Central Valley, there's a large population of Latino and Latinx people, and education's a big thing for me because not a lot of my family went to higher education or maybe didn't go to school at all. And at this moment of my life, I think I take my education and school very seriously. And I just have a goal of making it to like a bigger university one day and graduating. I hope the audience uh, takes away from my documentary that m many people don't have the same access as education or the same support as other people do. And education is a really important thing, especially in the United States where there's a lot of access to it, but a lot of people don't have the same support as other people do. Education. Every single one of us has heard that word before. We've all been part of the word and we've all changed because of that word. Starting young and early education to discovering ourselves in junior high, to taking our final moments of K through 12 in high school. For some, the journey stops there into the next chapter of the workforce. For many, the next chapter in their mission starts on continuing to pursue higher education. Education is an opportunity that many of your loved ones may not have had access to, whether that be gender, identity, race, or socioeconomic level. Education is a different journey for everyone with hardships, struggles, sacrifices. Same words that connect to the immigrant story. Families leaving behind close ones and memories to create a better life for their loved ones and their future. As a new generation enters, so does this new set of responsibilities expectations, and dreams. The Latinx story is a large part of the drive of the Central Valley. The music, the food, the work, the culture, and especially the people. In 2020, the United States totaled a population of more than 62.1 million Hispanic and Latinx people. In California's K-12, Hispanic and Latinx students made up 55.4%. First-generation students come in 44% of that 55%. That makes four in every 10 Hispanic students. In 2020, 13.2 millions of Hispanics and Latinx people graduated with a high school diploma. As students move out of high school into college, the numbers also begin to change before our eyes. Seven million enter college but leave with no degree. 3.5 million graduate with an associate's degree. 5.5 million with a bachelor's degree. 1.7 million with a master's degree and 273,000 with a doctoral degree. Now, let's backtrack on those numbers. Let's put a different lens on this. New keyword, Latino women. Six million graduate with a high school diploma. 3.6 million enter college, believe with no degree. 1.9 million with an associate's degree. 2.9 million with a bachelor's degree. 991,000 with a master's degree and 156,000 with a doctoral degree. Looking at these numbers, they could be interpreted in so many different ways from the perspective of a young Latina on our journey to getting a higher education. The numbers drop when we exclude the number of Latino men, but the numbers are still at the highest compared to before in history. You know, issues such as sexism, economical disadvantage, and racism are all factors that have been highlighted throughout history that connect to the college entrances. To many young girls, these statistics may come off as intimidating, especially in households where education is such a taboo and touchy topic. Now introducing and speaking is Dr. Elvia Rodriguez, Professor of Chicano Studies at California State University of Fresno. My name is Elvia Rodriguez. I'm a professor of history and Chicano studies. I teach both at Fresno State and at Fresno City College. At Fresno City College, I teach history there um, and at Fresno State where I also uh, teach history. Strange Chicano Studies. I started there in 2015. I've, I've wanted to teach history since the fourth grade. And I remember the exact moment I fell in love with history. <laughs> in recess time, I would ask my teacher if I could stay in the classroom because I didn't want to go out and play. I wanted to stay inside and look at my history book. And so there was um, a picture of a compass and it was supposedly a compass that like Sir Francis Drake had used in his navigation from Europe to the Americas. And I'm like, what is this? 
like you mean I get to learn about things that happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago um, and that's kind of how it started I just completely fell in love with with learning about the past for a while I'm kind of like oh maybe I'll be like an archaeologist when I was in the eighth grade we had to do a timeline in this imaginary timeline that we were creating um, I specifically remember that I put like oh in you know however many years Elvia will be an archaeologist and I remember my my teacher saying Elvia don't be ridiculous you're not going to be an archaeologist and and it was like so blunt you know it's like well why couldn't I possibly do this by the time I got to high school I'm, I'm going to be a history teacher I'm going to be a history teacher and then when I got to college it's like oh no I'm going to be a college professor in history I have been so incredibly fortunate that that's exactly what I get to do now as we continue to change the beliefs of the past Remembering your history and your culture is somehow getting intertwined in between. Assimilation is when entering a new country, the culture, the language, the social standards, and the values are shifted to fit the new country. First generations enter, but the struggle of navigating a new environment, like college, is difficult without the proper assistance. For people uh, from a minority background, whether we're talking about Latinx people, we're talking about African Americans, what have you, a lot of the time what we're missing is that uh, familial history in higher education. Our parents didn't go to college. Our grandparents didn't go to college. Part of our journey, and especially those of us that are first gen, is figuring out what, uh, what college is, you know, because we don't have a mom and dad to turn to. My parents have a grade school education. They didn't make it to high school back in Mexico, but no one tells you what it's going to be like because a lot of people in our own, in our own families, in our own community, don't know what that's like. And that's one of the things that that I found in my own journey is like, how the heck do I figure this out? Having someone to help you navigate is super important in, in having success in higher education. Where if we're talking about, you know, someone sitting in the classroom next to us who's, whose mom and dad went to college, whose grandparents went to college, that's in their history already. A lot of the times for, for Latinas, especially where we have to juggle family life as well you know where on a weekend okay i have a paper to write but i also have to help my mom cook or i also have to help out with the house chores or i also have to help um with younger siblings college isn't the only thing on our plate representation in media has been making great breakthroughs throughout recent years both on the big screens and literature and music but we fail to ask ourselves, how is representation important in an academic setting? But my parents always instill that value of education. Um, you're gonna go to school, you're gonna do well, and you're gonna make something of yourself. And, and like I said, getting to college is an accomplishment. And they knew, they knew how important that would be and that they supported me and that they were always looking out for me. It's like, si es lo que quieres hacer. I'm, very proud of my Mexican ancestry. Being able to talk about it in the classroom, I might be able to expose my students to things they didn't know about their own culture sometimes. The Chicano classes that I usually teach are Chicano art. So um, obviously we're gonna talk about uh, Mexican art, but like I'll do a little detour for Day of the Dead. In my women's history classes, I have an entire lecture, a whole week devoted to the experience of Mexican American American women and Chicanas. And it really is just promoting it, you know, talking about it, um, giving more students that knowledge that they probably wouldn't get anywhere else. I reference something. If you have uh, an American professor, are they ever going to be referencing a Chavo del Ocho? Well, like, and so making those connections with my students, talking about my own experiences. And whenever I have um, Hispanic students that come to me for help, like, can I can I get a letter of recommendation from, from you? Like, yes, of course. Like, how can I help you to further your journey um because it's important to have our our culture represented in academia in higher education as a latina to be able to stand in a classroom at an institution of higher education um yeah i'm gonna take opportunity to use that platform to talk to my students about our culture Machismo is a concept that originated around the 1930s. It associates with a strong belief and sense of masculine pride. The belief of women staying home, having children, and leaving school 
are all contributions to dropouts in education. Of course, all these decisions could be made by women themselves, but in a lot of households, this is considered a standard of roles. I've had friends whose parents were not supportive. Um, I remember one of my good friends in college, when, when she told her parents she was going to go for a master's, they, they literally told her, you're wasting your time. Um, are you going to find a husband in your master's program? That's what they told her, you know, and that was absolutely heartbreaking. She's a brilliant, brilliant woman. Um, and her parents' priority was for her to get married. And I mean, that's tough because for, for Latinas, it oftentimes is that, you know, where for, for some families, it's okay if their sons want to go off to college, but you have way more reservations or even sometimes a, like hesitation of no, like my my daughter is gonna move away to college and um, not be in my home and what is she gonna be doing? And like, why isn't she, you know, focusing on her family? It's like, you can't do that. It, it, it shouldn't be that double standard. Education is not perfect and it is always changing, both in the US and outside of the US, all around the world. But no matter your journey, your struggles, your goals, or your dreams, thank the people who support you at the end of the day. Whether that be parents, grandparents, siblings, friends, teachers. Thank you to everyone who believes in Latinx students and of the future. And thank you to everyone that showed us que si se puede.